Welcome to the Spendwise Moms channel, your homemaking resource hub. In this video, I give an overview of 25 ways to save money on food. No one's expected to do all of these things. I certainly don't. We all have different situations in life. And we all have different preferences. Just pick out a few that would fit in your lifestyle and then work on them one at a time to see if it's something you want to continue. In my videos about grocery shopping, I try to focus on one of these money-saving skills each time and go into more detail. First, and this is really important, is to stick to your budget. Once you decide however much money you want to spend, it's important to stick within that limit. Limits are not just something to take away your freedom. They help you to be wiser in managing what you have so you can live better in the long run. Second is to make a menu. Most people hate meal planning, and I am one of those as well, but I've seen how making a menu helps us to eat healthier meals and stay in my budget. I get in and out of the grocery store quicker as well, since I have a plan. Talk about planning. Number three is to plan your shopping trip. For me, this means making a detailed shopping list and estimating prices next to each item so I can make sure I buy what I want in the budget I have. Number four is markdowns. Some stores mark down grocery items that are getting close to their expiration. I know our Smith's and Alberton stores mark down bakery items and meat. Our Smith's also marks down cheese, deli products, and produce at times. One of our local stores marks down produce. I sometimes get lucky and find organic produce for less than a dollar a bag. Number five is loss leaders. Grocery stores take a loss on these items to lure you into their store, hoping that you will buy the rest of your groceries there at the same time. They don't appreciate people they call cherry pickers, like me, who come and only buy the loss leaders. Number six is sales. Each week, grocery stores have sales. Why pay full price when you can get the same item for less money? This leads into number seven, which is to buy low and stock up. If you know your grocery prices, you can spot a sale when it is at its lowest price and you can stock up. Number eight is coupons. Some people save a lot of money using coupons. This is one that I've tried in the past and I hate it. I choose to do some of the other ways instead, but if you like using coupons, it can be a real money saver. Number nine is to buy store brand or generic. This is an easy thing to do if you want to save a lot of money without putting forth a lot of effort. The savings can be substantial and most store brands have money back guarantees if you don't like it, so you have nothing to lose. Number 10 is buying foods in bulk. Many stores have bulk food sections where you can buy the amount you want at a significant savings. I sometimes use the bulk section if I need a spice that I don't regularly use. I just buy a teaspoon of what I need and I don't have to worry about buying a larger size. Number 11 is to make your own meals and snacks. Shrinkflation is a real thing and manufacturers are reducing the size of their packages while charging the same amount of money for them. I feel like making your own snacks gives you more control of the food you eat. It costs less, tastes better, and doesn't have the preservatives that processed food has that is on the shelf. Number 12 is to bake your own bread. I started doing this when my husband went to graduate school and I've kept doing it now that he's not in school anymore. There's nothing like the smell of fresh bread coming out of the oven. There aren't any preservatives in it and it tastes wonderful. You can make it exactly the way you want it. Number 13 is using a good recipe will make a difference. Depending on your level of cooking ability, you can eat like a king on a pauper's salary. Number 14 is meatless meals. With the increasing number of vegetarians around, the internet is full of recipes for great meatless meals, including recipes for international foods. Number 15 is to eat proper portions. Eating the right size portions helps you to stay fit and feel good. For example, a large bagel at a coffee shop can be up to four portions. 
If you eat a banana or a grapefruit, they are two portions each. Just because you can afford to eat more doesn't mean it's the best thing for you. When you eat proper portions, the food you make seems to stretch farther. Number 16 is to substitute. Say you don't have a cup of buttermilk. You can substitute it with a cup of milk and a little bit of vinegar. If you don't have cream of chicken soup, try making your own. Make homemade enchilada sauce at a fraction of the cost of buying it in the store. If you don't have lasagna noodles, substitute spaghetti noodles or elbow macaroni instead. I've made some great recipes by substituting things that I have with things that I didn't have on hand. Save yourself a trip to the store and be creative. Number 17 is to use less expensive ingredients. For example, instead of making cookies with chocolate chips and nuts, make oatmeal cookies or sugar cookies. They cost less to make and still taste great. Number 18 is to use less. When I make chili, for example, I use less meat and more beans. It saves money and there's a lot of flavor in the spices that you don't realize it. If you wanna make chocolate chip cookies, use half the amount of chocolate chips and maybe throw in a little oatmeal and your chocolate chips will last twice as long. Number 19 is to plant a garden. This is one we do regularly. I like knowing that my food is not sprayed with chemicals and it tastes better when we eat it right from the garden. We enjoy gardening and freeze enough of the surplus to last through a lot of the winter. If you don't have a backyard, you can still garden using pots or even milk jugs. Try it out, you just might get hooked. Number 20 is free food. If your neighbor has a surplus of zucchini, take it and be grateful. There are lots of things you can make with zucchini and you can freeze it to eat later if you get a lot of it. Some restaurants offer free meals for your birthday. Sometimes people advertise apples in the newspaper since they don't want to use them all. We can go pick choke cherries or huckleberries for free here in Montana. You may run into a bear if you do, but the option is there. Number 21 is potlucks. It's fun to spend time with family and friends. You can cook one dish and enjoy a variety of food. If you host a potluck, sometimes people will leave the rest of their dish or share it among the people who are involved. It certainly costs a lot less than dining in a restaurant or going out to a theater and watching a movie. Number 22 is to barter. I know someone who offered to cook meals for someone else in college if they would pay for the food. Maybe you can cut hair or sew or cook. Maybe you can trade your kids' clothes they've grown out of for something you want. Bartering saves everyone money as they share skills and things they already have instead of purchasing new. Number 23 is to eat seasonally. Produce costs less when it is in season. It tastes best at the peak of the season. Buy strawberries in April and raspberries in July and freeze them for the winter instead of paying three times as much to have them shipped in from other countries in the winter. Number 24 is to not waste food. The average family of four wastes enough food to feed one person for the entire year. That's around 25% of your food bill being wasted. Figure out ways you can reduce that number. For example, one way is by eating leftovers or freezing them if you can't eat them before they spoil. Record or put dates on your leftovers to help you remember if needed. The last is to weigh produce. Bags of apples, oranges, and carrots vary in weight. By weighing your produce, you can get an extra half to three-fourths of a pound in produce sometimes. The cost of other produce is sometimes calculated per item. So if you're buying cucumbers, for example, find the biggest one since they are the same price, whether it is the biggest or the smallest. Implementing some of these money-saving ways can save you a lot of money on your grocery bill. This video is an overview, and as I stated earlier, I try to focus on one in more detail in each of my weekly grocery videos. If you have other money-saving ways that I haven't included, please share them in the comments below. That way we can all benefit in saving money by helping each other. Thanks for watching the SpendWise Moms channel. Please subscribe for more videos like this.